Hello everyone, welcome to episode 15 of Top Chat. My name's Matt, and joining me as ever is my good friend and co-host, Joe. Alright mate. You've made me realise that that's what I say every week, and I don't think I ever planned it to be like that. And I don't know when that became my normal intro, either. We're just creatures of habit. We are creatures of habit, although this week is a slightly different format, so maybe Indeed. we're not. What a segue. Thank you. Uh, so later on in the show, we're joined by our second special guest of the podcast series so far. Uh, this time we're being joined by your younger brother, aren't we? Indeed. Uh, Sebastian Walsh, also known as Sebby from the Webby, because uh, Seb frequently contacts you. Yes. With some insight for the he didn't podcast. Today, though. He didn't today. Um well he doesn't need to because he's on this one, isn't he? Yeah. So you guys sat down over the weekend and recorded a Bethesda special. We did. Where you talked about what his feelings are on Bethesda games of the past, sort of a quick ranking of the Bethesda games that he's played, and it turns out he's played a lot more than I have. So a quick and ranking with your brother? A little quick You ranking. don't want to slip up on that a one, do you? A little group ranking. Group ranking. <laughs> right, okay. Um, and then a little look to the future, okay. as we always like to do. Lovely. Well, that's yeah. coming up a bit later on in the show, but for now, we'll start as we always do. Hopefully, your answer this week is slightly better than last week. What have you been playing? I've been playing Mass Effect 3, still. I thought you were playing Mass Effect 2. I completed that. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it, that I'm playing Mass Effect 3. You mentioned that you're replaying all of them? Yeah, uh, not Mass Effect 1, because I've played it so many times. But oh. Yeah, finally on Mass Effect 3. Cause oh yeah, because you've never played this one before, have you? No. So oh, no. Scary, isn't it? Enjoying it thus yeah, far? It's, it's pretty good. It's alright. It's got some problems, but it's alright. Hmm. Okay. About halfway through, I reckon. But I'm um, kind of doing it all. How seeing many? it all, seeing the sights. How many hours is that? Halfway? Uh, I'm on like 30 hours because I kept it paused oh. accidentally all day once. Oh, okay. Just to ruin our electricity bill. And yeah, nice fuck one. the planet because, you know, who cares. Um, I've been playing... Well, no, anything else, sorry? Probably not. No, I bought a few games, actually. Go on. I bought Battlefield 1 mm-hmm. in the uh, PlayStation oh, Spring shit, sale. Yeah, I need to check that. Check out the sale because it looks really good. I think they've changed it now because it's Wednesday and they normally yeah, change it every they Wednesday. Yeah, of course, of course. But £4 for Battlefield 1. A I, bargain. Yeah, World War 1. I'm quite interested in that. Never seen it in a game, so £4. I'm not going to play the online because, you know, online sucks. Have you played Battlefield online? I, it's played, quite, I find it quite difficult. The last honest. one I played was probably Battlefield Bad Company 2. That was the yes, last one I played online. Oh, yeah, I, think I played a little bit of Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront One online, but it's just yeah, the maps are too big for little Call of Duty scrubs like us. Yeah. Um, well, Fair I enough. bought the Spider Man DLC, so I've got Spider Man and Horizon DLC to play. Lovely. Pretty sick. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, and I bought LA Noir on my Switch, Ooh. which I've been waiting to get for a while because I haven't got a Switch game to play at the moment. And that, you, they've uh, just had a sale, so that was about 15 quid. Have you played that before? No, I haven't. I haven't either, but I feel like it's going to be very much up your street. I'm literally just waiting for that meme. Like, what, X the, the doubt. X-Doubt meme? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just going to like dab away furiously. Mm. Okay. Well, that's good. That sounds like you've got a lot of interesting things coming up. I have. I've been playing... Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. Shit the bed. Um, not loads, admittedly. I think last week I said I just finished the um, prologue with Haytham, and now I'm playing as Connor, or going to try and pronounce the uh, um, Native American pronunciation of his actual name, which I believe is Ratonaketon. That sounded Italian. So I don't think it did. It did a bit. No, definitely didn't. Yes. But that's his name. Um, also known as Connor, because obviously the game's for the Western market, and we can't say things like that. So, um, not as in it's it's racist too, as in, you know, you just heard me attempt it, it was quite difficult. Anyway, almost a bit of a tangent there. Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered is difficult to play. Is it? I'm not sure if I'm enjoying it or not, (laughs) to be honest. I am, but I'm not. And I think I think the issue I'm having with it is I'm I'm going for the platinum and I don't really know why because I've never really been a trophy guy until about a year ago when I suddenly decided yes I am a trophy guy mm. so now I'm playing it to get the platinum and one of the constraints of doing so is that you have to complete all of the objectional uh, sorry ob- what am I trying to say optional objectives 
within every mission of the game. And earlier this evening, I kid you not, I was doing the same section of a mission, so not even the whole mission, just the same like three or four minute segment for two hours because it's quite a buggy, glitchy game. And you know how in, in most games... You would have fixed that, being a remaster. You would have thought, but there's so many... But I mean, I might be looking back on the original with rose-tinted glasses or whatever, but I feel like it wasn't that buggy, especially compared to Unity that, you know, followed a few years later. But, yeah, like, I keep seeing NPCs and enemies and stuff just get stuck behind trees, like, just consistent, uh, constantly walking forwards into a tree. The other day, I killed a deer, which then quite handily split into three separate deer, so I oh, had wow. three lots of deer meat and, and uh, furs to sell, which was lovely. But, yeah, they're just the same segment of this mission, because you know how in stealth games, the way that you complete stealthy bits is you have to learn like patterns of like patrols and stuff mm. and then you think okay when he's facing that way I can take out that one and then I have to get back there before he turns stuff like that it's so inconsistent and then when you realise like you see an opening then he just fucks up his climbing and before he like jumps basically what I was trying to do is board a ship without being spotted so I'm hanging off the edge of the ship waiting for this guy to come close enough to stab him and pull him over the edge without being seen I do that and then I have to move further along the hull of the ship to another guy. And even though I'm holding left, most of the time holding left and down to make him not climb over, he still does. And it's just infuriating. So in the end, I turned it off. Because I was well, like, this is so... Yeah, I haven't passed it. It's just... It, oh, it's after just two hours. Up. After two bloody hours. Well, I'm on DNA sequence seven, so I'm already sort of halfway through the game. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know, right? Is it like and Assassin's I've done... Creed 2 where it's like, oh, you're on DNA sequence 11, and now you're on DNA sequence 14? No. Okay. No, they did that in two, I think, because yeah. they knew they were going to make um, sequels as yeah. such. Well, DLC yeah. got better, didn't it? Yeah, it did. But I've I've done 100% of the constraints on every other mission so far, so I'm going to keep going. I will finish it, and then I think I'm going to play a bit of Bioshock Infinite Remastered, because I was talking Ooh. to Sebi about that the other night, yeah. when he came to visit to do the podcast. Well, not to do the podcast, but you know. Mm. Um, chatting to him about Bioshock as well. I want to play Bioshock, I've decided. Yeah? I feel like I've missed it. I want to get the remastered. The, the original Bioshock is one of... I mean, it was in my top ten, wasn't it? I think it was like uh, fifth so, or yeah. sixth. Just a fab, just brilliant. Don't really know what else to say about it. It's brilliant, yeah. brilliant game. I, I want to Do you play know it. the twist? No, I don't think so. Oh. I probably have heard it, but I mean, it's something no, that I good. don't know like the context behind, so good. I don't pay attention to it. Good. Well, I look forward to you finally playing it. Yeah. Well, I've got lots to play first. You oh, do. Oh, Days Gone is coming out in two days. Yeah. I'll so I, what, I've this... not hit my target. I said I was gonna. Well, I said I was gonna finish Odyssey before Days Gone, which I have done. But I said I was gonna finish Odyssey and Three Remastered, which mm. I haven't done. Well, but, I said oh, well. I was going to get Days Gone on release, but I think I'm going to get it next Thursday. Which Why? Which hopefully I'll have finished Mass Effect by then. Because that's oh, my okay. payday. I'm booking holidays. <laughs> going to go to Prague. Going to go to uh, All right, steady on. Nulka. What? Going to go you... to Lowestoft. Why are you going to Prague as well? Okay, talk oh, me through Prague, Prague and Prague. Lowestoft. And yeah, my Prague, nan's lovely. in Lowestoft, and she's going to listen to this podcast. Are you go yeah, well, nans love the podcast. Nans love it. We usually save that for the end, but um, if you're new mm. around here, share this with your nan. Generally speaking, yeah. they love it. Um, who are you going to Prague with, your beloved? Probably on my own, to be honest. Oh, I think I'm going to okay. go in a couple of weeks. I could come with you. Yeah, as you could if you wanted. Well, thanks for the well, should invite. We, should we record an episode out there? Top chat live from Prague. Why have you decided that you want to go to Prague on your own? It's like 30 quid return. Why have you not told me about this? I literally just decided today, and I thought I'd mention it on our podcast. With the intention of saying to me, do you want to come to Prague? Or well, you... maybe at some point. I just know that you're a bit of a stick in the mud. Anyway. Um... <laughs> I not mean, a you... travel podcast. Oh, I wish we fucking were. Yet. Yeah, that would be... That's where that's mm. the money is. Have you seen these people who go travelling, they're like, oh, I'm a blogger. And they, like, make yeah. money off it. Imagine mm. making money off the internet. I know, right? What a thing. What a profound concept. Imagine viewers on the internet Imagine well. just travelling the world and being paid to do it. Imagine being paid. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? I anyway, uh, let's move on. We're uh, not a depressing wait, wait, wait. podcast. <laughs> what or, was, that, what was I talking about? Days Gone. Back days to gone. Days Gone. We are yes. a Days Gone podcast. We are. Exclusively from now on. Yep, nothing else um, will be discussed. But yeah, th this is a really good month. I'm enjoying this month. I've got... Okay. 
uh, Avengers Endgame tomorrow, which I'm going to go see. If I don't fall asleep. I'm, I've got to wake up at 5am. Um, 5am? And then I'm going to the cinema at 8. 8am? 8, 8, <laughs> 8, 8 in the evening. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's a three, and out, th- three hour film. Oh, you're definitely going to fall, fall asleep. asleep you know? I, I would. If you're going to a decent... Like, if you're going to Peckham Plex, then you're not going to fall asleep. Oh, I'm going to a... But if you're going to a decent uh, cinema... I'm going to every man in uh, Muzzy Hill. Lovely. And, um, yeah, Game of Thrones as well is this, this month. Don't watch it. Well, you should. No. That's <laughs> oh, a bit too late now. Oh, but yeah, I'm not going to. Very good. Apparently everyone's dying, or like everyone's dead. No, that, that's, that's just Game the, of Thrones. The, that's what the spoilers... Not, not the new episodes, no. Oh, okay. Anything else? So Days Gone, that... Yeah, that, oh. that's, that's pretty much it. Decent month. Decent month. And speaking of decent month... Okay. Uh, on our Metacritic this week... Oh, yeah. Mortal Kombat 11 has just come out. Can I? Can I guess... You can guess, go on. So what, this is the PlayStation 4 version. I was going to say what version. I'm going to go with, because and my basis for this is that, generally speaking, Mortal Kombat games are reviewed quite highly because they are somewhat formulaic, but I think they're very well made and they appeal to that childish, brutal, like gore-obsessed idiot that lives inside all of us. So they, generally speaking, they get reviewed quite well. So I'm going to go for a nice little 83 He's fucking done it, ladies and gentlemen. 83. Really? Yeah. No way. Bang on 83. 83. Fucking, I'm so happy with that. And that's the end of the podcast forever. Well, yeah, I mean, we've peaked. Literally peaked. If this doesn't get... Oh, I'm all sweaty. 8.3 viewers. Oh, my God. Then... Do you know what's weird about that? Is I was thinking, the whole time I was like... Just spouting that nonsense. You were going to say about, 84, I was going to say 82. Oh, shit. And then at the last minute, I thought, you know what? I always go for Bump even numbers. Well, no, I just, I've got this obsession with even numbers. I don't like odd numbers. But I thought, really unlike me to just be like, fuck it. Let's try something. 83. 83? He tries something I'm new, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy. You should I'm, see him when he, on his birthday, right when he now. becomes like an odd number. Oh, I'm going to be oh, an odd number this year. inconsolable. <laughs> I'm going to be an odd number this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you, sh- you should know. Oh, we yeah, are the same the age. 24- yeah, but 25. Five's a nice odd number. Oh, this time it's not. Oh, no. You're it might be alright when I'm 35 30. and I don't care, but 25 is just nah, like. Oh. 35 is worse than 25. No, because I still feel young. By the time I'm 35, I'm probably going to feel 35. No, but then you'll be like, oh, now I feel old. You won't, yeah, you won't be like young, but you'll feel old. Your life will be over. And we'll be on Top Chat episode. <laughs> 1,000 and we'll get three of your listeners still yeah. <laughs> we'll have, if anything we'll have got less <laughs> it's so we'll have stopped viewing that, our videos that 83 that little guess right there is so incredibly brilliant but no one in the world apart from you <laughs> and maybe Seb is, is going to hear and I feel like the whole world needs to hear that because that was fantastic I have a 1 in 100 chance of getting it exactly that's the proudest I've ever been for 1% anything ever. chance I even did the finger snap because I was so excited oh. So it's 2002 all over again. Well, congratulations to whoever develops. Um, I only said Ninja Gaiden then. Um, Mortal Kombat. More importantly, yes. Congratulations to you. Thank you. That is far more important. We should, we should, let's tweet the developer. See if we can get a congratulations. Okay. Are you going to do that right now? Nah, maybe not right no, now. No, I was going to say they well, they might be very confused. S- speaking of things that haven't speaking been tweeted things, yet. Yes. Matt's just released a new top opinion. Oh yeah, he hasn't called it top opinion though. He's gone no. for a bit of a mix-up, and he's designed the bloody I, thumbnail. I did the thumbnail, which is why it's not very good. Um, I've I've had two days off in a row and not a lot to do, so I just decided to whack one out. Um, it's about Fortnite. It's about why I think it's it's five reasons why I think Fortnite is the world-beating success that it is. So you can go and check that out on the YouTube spoil channel. Us. Give us one reason. One reason is because of something you might not consider straight away. It's because of the age rating. Because oh. Fortnite is... Do you want to guess what Fortnite is? 7 plus. Uh, it was 12 plus. 12 plus. There is violence at the end uh, of the day. It's not going to be 7 plus. You do uh, shoot okay. people. But yeah, 12 plus. So that's one of the reasons I think yeah, the game has... Uh, no blood, in it? No blood. No mm. no swearing. And they don't, e- they don't even use the term kill. Do they not? No, if you if you shoot cunted. someone, cunted. Yes, you've cun- you've cunted them out of the game. It just Absolutely pops up saying, twatted someone. <laughs> plus one cunted. No, uh, elimination. 
Okay. Yeah, and and it used to be back when I used to play it, like in the oh, in the really early days before anyone was good. Um, the you, the little icon that showed you how many eliminations you had used to be a skull, mm. and then a few months later they changed it to a crosshair. That's how mm. kid friendly. Anyway, so yeah, that's on the YouTube channel uh, now. So yeah. you can go and check that out. For the other four I've not reasons. got... The, the reason... Yeah, for the other four reasons. Yeah, spoiler alerts. It's no. like Avengers Endgame, Matt's Top Opinion. You know, we don't want to spoil things here. No, no. Know, Equally... Equally up, important. Yeah. I can't wait till you make a billion in revenue as well as Avengers. Well, I've tried to go a bit clickbaity and zeitgeist, so um, yeah. Mm. Hashtag sell out. Uh, should we do the news? We might as well. The news this week is really weird because there's not really anything of interest. You know, I feel like most weeks we'll have one or two big stories and then mm. you decided you were going to do Woody's Roundup and then that immediately just, you haven't done that since. That, that was, was like episode 11 or whatever. Yeah, wow. Well, this week, you'll be pleased to know, it's pretty much just exclusively tidbits. Is it? Was... So, so it's not what's occurring, it's Woody's Roundup. Yeah. Um, Shall I just get into it? Might as well. Just... I feel like I've talked a lot already. But it's fine, because they're about to... They, as in the listeners, you guys, you're about to hear a lot of uh, Joe's voice anyway, so... Is it? And a little disclaimer, they do sound very similar. Oh, uh, in Joe that bit. Seth. I thought you meant I was going to talk about the news a lot. Was, no, 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 you've got your... I was wetting my whistle. No, you, you're about to be lead presenter in about 10, 15 minutes' oh. time. Yeah. But yeah, you do sound very similar. Anyway, it doesn't go well. We'll segue into that in a minute. I'm sure it does. I haven't even listened to it yet. Anyway, the news... So, I'm just going to reel through these. If there's anything you want to sort of dive into and we can dissect, we can talk about together, then I guess we can do just that. Yes. But for now, uh, this is in no particular order because, as I say, none of it's particularly interesting. Oh. So, from the top, PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, uh, to that's the what uninitiated. That stands for. Did Fuck you not me. know? Oh, that's a joke. You just oh. killed my joke, literally, right but, there. But no, but that is the sort of thing you wouldn't know, to be <clears> fair, <throat> because you don't have any interest in games like this so to be fair I did think for a minute maybe you've just heard people saying PUBG and always been like oh yeah yeah what this makes me want to go to the pub okay should we go to the pub not right now you've got to be up in like three minutes Um, so PUBG has been unbanned in Nepal for now Um, so good news if you're listening and you're in Nepal following on from that famous news story where it was banned in Nepal that I did not know about yes exactly Well, it's the only country in the world, I think, other than like China, that it's banned in for no, it's been some to unknown Nepal reason. Three times. That's a very, very, very <laughs> obscure Gavin and Stacey reference, right there. Um, but good news to you, Nepalese, is you won't get arrested for playing PUBG anymore. Happy days. Uh, Halo Infinite, the upcoming. Is, it, is Halo Infinite the new one, isn't it? And then there's the Master Chief Collection as well. So Halo Infinite, yeah. the new Halo game, is not launching with a battle royale. Um, seemingly because mm. the developers at 343 realised that it's not going to be as good or as world beating as Fortnite anyway I so mean, what's the point by the time Halo Infinite launches which is probably two years time uh, will, will, will it be a thing still? well I mean we're fast approaching Fortnite's second birthday anyway and it's still the biggest and like Minecraft yeah, no, yeah I know but like as uh, I'm sure Fortnite is going to carry on oh yeah like killing it but as as Minecraft still killing it, but it's it's killing it in the background now. Minecraft GTA not. Five. L- listen to my top opinion if you want to know more about how Minecraft is. Minecraft's the most played game monthly in the world. Yeah, it's got but like ninety saying, million still monthly it, players. But it's it's not at the forefront of everyone. Like Minecraft at one point, the same with Fortnite. It was on the front page all the time. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, no, it depends where you so, look. So, but, but two years. There'll be another game, No Maybe. Man's Sky 2 or something. Yeah, yeah, you wish. Um, following on from the PlayStation Classic and the... Uh, Nint- well, what was the Nintendo? The, the Super Nintendo Mini, whatever. Uh, from those things. Uh, Sega uh, doing a, Ma- a Mega Drive Mini. Uh, this has been announced before. I think we even mentioned it, to be honest. But they've uh, revealed 10 more games that are due to be launching with the, the Mini console. And they are Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, World of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, and Donald Duck. Oh, wow. Thunder Force 3, Super Fantasy Zone, Shinobi 3, Streets of Rage 2, 
uh, Earthworm Jim, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Contra, Hard Corpse or Hard Core. That might be Hard Core, because it's C-O-R-P-S, but that means core, doesn't it? Or that's pronounced core. And I think Contra is a game about, like, army. And within the realms of the army, C-O-R-P-S is pronounced core. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I never knew that. Um, And Landstalker. So those are your ten games. Uh, They're joining Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Echo the Dolphin, uh, Castlevania Bloodline. Castlevania. Castlevania. Northern. Castlevania Bloodlines, Space Harrier 2, Shining Force, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Oh my god, what a game. Toe Jam and Earl, Comic Zone, Altered Beast, and Gunstar Toe Heroes. Jam and Earl. Yeah, I mean, I think Streets of Rage 2 and Earthworm Jim are going to be pretty big draws for some people there, so decent Sonic reveal. The Hedgehog 2? Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. You know what my um, favourite game on the, my Sega Mega Drive was? You had a Mega Drive? A Sega Mega Drive 2, actually. Did you? Yeah. Go on. Um. Oh, what was it? A paper boy, I think it was called. No you, idea. You, you played as a paper boy. Did you? That sounds yeah. thrilling. It it really was. So that um the sorry, I'm just going to move completely on from that. The Sega Mega Drive Mini launches on the 19th of September, I believe, worldwide. Wow. In some more Star Wars news. Oh God, we really are rattling through. There's not a lot of news. There really isn't. It's been a very dry week. Um, Jedi Fallen Order, the upcoming Star Wars game from Respawn. Entertainment, I think that's what they're called, aren't they? Yeah. Um, they claimed recently that it is a single-player experience only, with no DLC and no online modes. However, the game was listed on the PlayStation Store recently for pre-order, uh, and in the product description, you know where it says like the age rating and then network mm. enabled and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, it does say online play, brackets optional, which I've never seen before. So, mm. I haven't I heard about good. this story. I mean, that's all it is. It's not really. <laughs> I mean, what I'm hoping this is. It's just someone at Sony's cocked up with the list. Either listing. that or it's online co op. Something like that. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be nice. We could, we could be play good. a game together. We could. When was we... the last time we played a game together? Well, we played a bit of FIFA recently. Oh, yeah. Actually, on last week's episode, we did say halfway through, we were like, oh, should we play a bit of FIFA after this? And we actually did. And it was fun. Man, I have been crushing it on FIFA. I played Seb on FIFA. I played you on FIFA. I, yeah, hang on. We played. Did we play yesterday? We played yesterday. You won yeah, twice. Yeah, I won twice. You won once. <sighs> yeah, but yeah. let's be real. Who who did, who are you when you won? Oh, first Man game City. I was Man City. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were Arsenal. I didn't beat you with. Did I beat you with Arsenal? Yeah. Well, I was Anzik Mashakalala. In the Russian league, yes, that then, sounds like a Russian name. Yeah, some fucking some French team. Oh yeah, yeah. But also, FIFA is your game, well, I and I haven't played wow. FIFA in about a year. Wow, more than that. Yeah, well, last time I played and, FIFA was against you anyway. Like, yeah, I killed Seb though. I'm sure oh, you did. He, we played Man United versus Man United. Why? Because we're both Man United fans. Mm, classic. Being not from New York. Yeah, and uh, he beat me because I got my typical red card. Nice. Who and got then, red uh, carded? Oh, probably Chris Smolin, let's probably, be honest. Yeah. And um, and then I beat him like 7-1 and 8-2. Oh, okay. Yeah. So could I beat Seb? Maybe. Hmm. We might we'll find see. out, yeah. Well, he's coming back, isn't he? he is. Not to do more on... Well, I mean, he could do a bit more on Top Chat if he wants, but probably he not. He, he might not have time. Anyway. Um, next on the list of not very interesting news, April the 21st, which was three days ago, uh, was the 30th birthday of the original Game Boy. Mental. Bloody mental. 30. 30 years. That means I'm 30 Uh, years old. It does not. Oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm 24. Yeah. (laughs) Stop talking about age. I remember when I I played the... See, I, I, I was one of these, like, millennial kids here... I was all over here happy with my Game Boy Color. Yeah, and I had a someone color. showed me a Game Boy, and I was like, "What the fuck? Mm. Black and white? Mm. That's bloody mental! Look at mm. Tetris without the colors. Ding, do, do, You're ding, kidding me? Ding, 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 bloody ding, crazy! Ding. Yeah, I've. I was over here with full color micro machines. I've still got my Game Boy Color, and I know somewhere in my dad's house is. A big fat Game Boy. It was one of the clear plastic ones. You as had well. a clear plastic one. Yeah. See, 
Ah. Gamers <laughs> have an obsession with, with clear, clear plastic. plastic. Yeah, yeah, you love seeing the I mechanics. fucking hate it. I we, remember seeing... I think there was a clear plastic PlayStation controller recently. And oh, I saw a... Th- ooh, that looks... I saw on Reddit Bloody the other horrible. day an Xbox One controller that was... Oh, no, it was the Xbox clear. One that's kind of like half white, half clear. Yeah. Oh, everyone's like, ooh, ooh. Nah, it's I'm not like, very nice. Ah, I don't like that. Mate, I don't want to be seeing the wires. Yeah, if it was fully clear... I would, I, I swear Xbox, like the original Xbox, had like green and purple, I think, clear controllers. Maybe. Anyway. Oh, I remember that. No, the, there was the Game Boy Advance, the purple clear one. Oh, yeah, I didn't have that. Oh, I never had an Advance, but I had an Advance have... SP. Did you? I had the flippy up one. Nice. Love I, I, had the, uh, I had a purple Advance and a yellow colour. My colour is uh, Aquamarine. Is it? Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's that's a nice colour, isn't it? Yeah, let's go with that, shall we? I miss, nice. I miss a time of like some tacky little plastic colours. Yeah, I remember my my older brother. He um for his PlayStation Two, he went to Wales on holiday. Went to apparently, Wales. Apparently, that's a holiday. <laughs> it's not a holiday. And uh, he came back with his PlayStation Two decked out in red vinyl wrapping, oh. red shiny oh, vinyl God. wrapping. Peeled off instantly. Oh, I have a little confession to make based on that. What's that? So about two years ago, no, more than that, because I've had... So my pride and joy is my PS4 controller, which was is, rather, a limited edition PlayStation 1 original, like, grey. I can't remember what it's called, but, like, the PlayStation grey. And it's the anniversary it's, one. Yeah, yeah, it's that on my controller, and I love it. It's my favourite thing in the world. Before that, I just had a standard black controller, oh, and I was really bored by it. controller. No, I had two. So you've... Yeah, that's the thing. Your controller is my controller, and it's yes. absolutely disgusting. But I had another one, and I... For some reason, I was bored with it just being black. And I, you might remember this now, because I'm pretty sure you saw it. I bought off Amazon for, like, 50p. Wait, a, is it the Assassin's Creed? No, no, oh, no, okay. no. It, it was a gold... Yeah, Ooh. a gold sticky vinyl for the controller. Oh, and bear in mind, I did this when I was 22, <laughs> so it's not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Um, that. I'm 24 now, but I was 22. I was so young. That's, yeah, that's not no, even it's like. Not, a... No, it's not an excuse. I don't know what happened. I just thought, oh yeah, that might look good. You think you're pimping? It didn't even because it, it was like I'm gonna have to grab my. Where is my control? Oh, it's all over there. So basically, rather than wrap all the way around the handle, for example, it would like wrap on that panel and then that panel. So there were always tiny little gaps. Yeah. Or, so yeah, but also you never get it without Shocking. the lumps. No, never. It's impossible. Never. It's yeah, it is impossible without the air bubbles. That's a really good. Uh, that was a really good tangent. I like that. Thank you. Well, happy <laughs> you birthday to the Game Boy. Anyway. Yeah, happy birthday, Game Boy. Thanks for being uh, my first a ever good handheld console. console. Yeah, my first. I mean, was... it's probably the first ever popular handheld console, wasn't it? Yeah, can't you'd imagine of, so. I can't think of much else that was. Nah, it's got to be that going on before then. It's got to be that. Um, here's one for you. So, apparently, I didn't know this, uh, right now the Fortnite World Cup is going on, or it was oh, last week. I don't I don't know what this consists of. I don't know... Well, don't know anything about it. I didn't even know it was on. So, the story here is that Epic have caught X amount of players cheating within the tournament thus far. Um, do you want to hazard a guess while you just absolutely neck that pint of water and some of it dribbles down your chin? Do you want to just guess how many players Epic caught cheating in the first... Oh, it's on your t-shirt. Ruining my shirt. Um, Epic caught cheating in the first week of the tournament. Give me a little bit of context. Well, this like, is say how many players are in the tournament. I, d- I didn't know. All right, 70,000. Uh, well, no. That's, oh. <laughs> no. Bit- 394. No, there's more. Than, all right, one thousand two hundred people Blimey. over. Blimey! But I don't know how many people are in this tournament, but I would imagine it's probably around, based off of that number, five to ten thousand maybe. Because hmm. there's a lot of like pros and and whatever. Like there's a really big like competitive scenes. So there's probably a lot of players, but for one thousand two hundred players to have been caught cheating, mental. It's, it's a lot. Chill out, guys. What do you think? I don't know why. I've, I've turned the news into a quiz for you because okay. it keeps it slightly interesting. What do you think is the best-selling game of 2019 thus far? Because we've just had the end of Q1, haven't we? Which is quarter one 
for those who don't mm. know <laughs> business and economics. So the first quarter of the year is gone. Well, dep- I'd say the best-selling game is a game that's not released in 2019. Or is this the best-selling game? No, 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 released? no. This is this is the best-selling game. So, so basically, what you're saying could be true because Red Dead Redemption is like fifth, and yeah. even GTA, GTA Five is, is like ninth. always up there. Yeah, yeah GTA and GTA and Minecraft there. are always there. Um, no, so it, is, it, is this in 2019? It, yeah, it's a game that has been released in 2019 as well. Also, to give you a little bit of a... Oh, actually, I don't know. Anthem. No, it's not Anthem. Um, Division 2. No. I was no, going to give you... Those. No, it's neither of those. All right, give me a clue then, because I'm Well, I don't know if this less. is a clue or not. Um, I believe it's a console exclusive. But it might not be. I think it is. The, the, the predecessors both were. Hmm. But... Red Dead's a console exclusive. So far, anyway. It is, yeah. It's a game you have probably forgotten about. Because you don't have any interest in it. Is it Kingdom Hearts? It's Kingdom Hearts 3. Is the best-selling game of 2019 thus far. Bloody hell. So How it's sold. It's sold? Uh, pfft, don't know. Should have looked that up. Um, so it Shouldn't have to. So it's outsold. Yeah, like you say, Anthem, The Division 2. Sekiro, it's outsold. It's outsold um, the Resident Evil 2 remake. I would have said out of like... Because yeah. I'd say the standout games of 2019 so far, what you've listed, Anthem and Division, then Sekiro, uh, Kingdom Hearts, Resident Evil, and what was the other one? That was it. That's, all That's it. <laughs> yeah, those, those are the standout games of 2019 so far. Yeah. I would have definitely put Division 2 and Anthem above both or all of the single player I games. I would have put Division 2. I, I knew Anthem wasn't going to sell well because the, yeah, but even, mm, the post it or didn't, sorry, the pre launch weekend just ruined that game. Yeah, but it's sort of. It, it's like Division. No, uh, Destiny, sorry. Like, it doesn't have great press starting off, but because of like who developed it, who released it, the marketing behind it. It's, yeah. It sells a lot. I think it's having a lot of problems though, isn't it? Like I said, a really shaky mm. start. I don't think people have got behind it. So, yeah. Congratulations to Square Enix um, because they've got the best-selling game of 2019 thus far. And I haven't even bought it yet. I want to, but I haven't yet. All right. What What's going to be the best-selling game by the end of the year? Uh, released in this year or just this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Released in this year. Um, I don't know because I'm not as good with release calendars as you are. Is there a Mario game coming out? Uh, oh, actually, no. Does I'm gonna... Mario Maker two? No, that won't be. I'm going to stick my neck out and say, um, Pokemon Sword, Sword and Shield. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because I think Pokemon Sun and Moon sold very, very well, and I think Pokemon Go really revitalised the franchise's mm. like ha- well. Saying that, the DS games always sold just unbelievable numbers so yeah I'm going to say Sword and Shield I'll tell you why you're wrong in three three little words go on Call of Duty uh, do people care? well Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 4 was the best selling game of last year was people really? still care yeah wow, even over Red Dead 2 no actually I don't know if you've got this in the news but um I saw a I cu- probably don't. <laughs> uh, in fact, no, Call I Call of Duty, don't. Uh, the new game, has been oh, played yeah. by yeah. a couple of people. That, I think it was an American footballers or something were posting it as I, an ad sponsor thing. All I over did see the media. story, but I didn't deem it worthwhile because it was literally that. It was mm. Mm, People have been playing the new Call of Duty. Who is it this year? Um, Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer's year, yeah, yeah. Advanced Warfare 2. Infinite Warfare 2. Um, yeah, I don't probably know. some other. That was the last Call of Duty I played. What Infinite? The one where you started bouncing around. I think the last Call of Duty you played was Advanced, because Infinite Warfare is the one that came bundled with uh, COD yeah. Four Remastered. We both played Advanced Warfare and raced to like that first one? prestige and never played it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that. That's pretty much the end of the gaming news. But there is one other story that I wanted to oh. mention, just because I'm a big fan. Um, much like you with Game of Thro- Game of Thrones. So tomorrow, which is April the 25th, so this will have already passed by the time you're listening to it, uh, so go and find it, I suppose. There's going to be a live stream video thing revealing details on James Bond 25, the new film. 
That's too much dead air. That's you need to say something. I've got nothing to say. That's far too much. Um, I might just cut that down a little bit, so it's not that much dead air. But um, there was a silence for at least ten seconds. I was going to um, say two minutes. I was going to make people think that we just stared at each other for for three minutes. We could do. Shall we? Let's start now. Wow, nah, it's, it, <laughs> that was the longest <laughs> three minutes of my life. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Daniel Craig. So yeah, is da- he a Daniel thing? Craig is is Bond still. It's probably going to be his last film. Uh, Lia Seydoux, who was in Spectre as like the eye candy, she is reprising her role, which is interesting because the last two, the last three Bond films have not been based on books. So basically, the the, the franchise rebooted with Daniel Craig doing Casino Royale because Casino Royale is the first book. And is where I'd love to do a, a James Bond podcast because I really do like James Bond a lot. Doing on but your basically, own, really? yeah, well, I might do. It basically rebooted the franchise because people like Sean Connery and Pierce Brosnan had basically ruined the character. So they started from scratch with Daniel Craig. Um, he has absolutely nailed what James Bond is meant to be. And then Quantum of Solace was brilliant. Skyfall was decent. Spectre, I thought, was a bit meh. But interestingly, for James Bond 25, supposedly, Rami Malek is going to be playing the villain. Who is, of course, uh, from Mr. Robot, and then more recently, Bohemian Rhapsody, playing Freddie Mercury. Are you going to look him up? No, I just remember, like, <laughs> I was going to say, famously from... And then, oh no, I was going to... I was going to interject there with a funny. Go on. Rami Malek, famously from Night of the Museum. Oh yeah, because he's Tutankhamun, isn't he? He is, yeah. Because yeah, it's funny because really he's not famous for being in that That's film, good humour, that. There's really is. good humour. Comedic anyway. timing is on point at Top Chat. It H-Q. really is. We're pretty much bang on. Well, I just want to... Oh, go on. Are we expecting any James Bond gaming news? No. Well, they, mean, did, they didn't make a game for in, Skyfall or Spectre, so... Ah, I can imagine them doing a... Have I, I don't know if I've mentioned... You must know this, but... I don't know if I've met, ever mentioned it on the podcast... I feel like I have. Um, the last James Bond game we got... Yeah, because I think in, in franchises we want to see rebooted, which is what, like episode 4 or 5? I mentioned James Bond games, because the last Bond game we got was Quantum of Solace in, I think, 2008 or nine, developed by Treyarch, and uh, I was, for about three or four days, I was number two in the world on, yeah, no, on their equivalent of free-for-all. I can't remember well, what the game mode was called. Well, I can see them doing sort of like a... Uh... Not like a a complete tie into the movie, but maybe some sort of like a Mad Max situation, where well, they've just maybe. got the the franchise coming out at the same time, but they're not actually related to each other. But they're just sort of in the public conscience. I can see yeah. that happening. James Bond would be pretty good. Yeah, it'd be brilliant with with the the I'd rise of Hitman again. Yeah, but I suppose Hitman's always been like a game, hasn't it? Like the two Hitman movies are both pretty terrible I mean well I haven't seen the one with um, oh god the, the more recent one I haven't seen I've seen the one with Timothy Oliphant and it's actually it's not not that bad it's pretty awful but it's not it's watchable but apparently the, the more recent one's even worse so Should um one day was just rank the worst video game movies ever that's a shout write that down anyway anything else you wanted to add before we transition no transition so yeah upcoming now upcoming now coming up now words is uh, words are difficult I'm kind of glad this has been a quick week for me Um, yeah mentioned it earlier so Sebby from the Webby Sebastian Walsh good lad came to our abode to crash for the night before he went to Poland where he currently is but uh, you and him recorded a feature I guess we could call it on Bethesda and why you both like their games. Yeah. We'll and I'm glad I wasn't involved because I don't really know anything about any well, of them. It turns Bethesda's out, as I was recording this, realised I've completed like two Bethesda games. Really? This is Bethesda Game Studios, by the way. A little caveat. Okay. Not just Bethesda in general, but Bethesda right. Game Studios. So we look back, it turns out Seb's played pretty much all their releases. Oh. Um, Sweaty. Well, since like. I think he's played Elder Scrolls, all the Elder Scrolls games, um, Fallout since Bethesda Game Studios took it over. Blimey. 
Uh, and yeah, and then we look forward to Elder Scrolls Six and Starfield. Has he played Fallout seventy six? He hasn't though. No. Oh, okay, so he doesn't go on like a rant about that halfway through. Uh, we we have a little chat about it, but okay. I think he's similar to me. We're we're not big online gamers. Fair enough. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further, a, a, is it a do or a do? It's just a a do. A yeah. do means goodbye. I've got yeah. it tattooed on my body. Yeah, you do. Uh, so without further of that, <laughs> here is uh, Joe and Seb. T- ha, take it away, guys. Transition. Wow, such a smooth transition. Here we go. <laughs> All right, this is the the Bethesda special with me, Joe, and Sebby, not from the Webby, in now real in life. real life. In real person. How, How are, are you, you Seb? Uh, I'm well. Heart mm-hmm. attacks aside, I'm good. Heart attacks aside, Heart yeah. Attack. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Wow. Well, uh, you're a big Bethesda fan, aren't you? So I'm a bit of a fanboy. Yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, maybe we'll start off listing our favourite Bethesda games. How does that sound? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Go on, then. I'm, I'm going to guess yours. Uh, Morrowind is your favourite Bethesda game? It, it's hard to say my favourite because they, there's different reasons why I like each of the different games. Because they all do something different well and then other things really badly. But I'd, I'd have to go with Skyrim as the, my favourite overall in general just because yeah. the amount of hours I've put into it and what how many times you've bought it as well yeah um five five times but I own six copies six that's ridiculous yeah I got the special edition though for free because I'd owned it on PC with all the DLC so but, so the special edition of Skyrim is like when all the remasters came out yeah 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 okay but it doesn't operate any graphics because computers are great no but like um <clears throat> The, the one of the good things about Skyrim is you on PC you can make it still look like a 2018 game yeah even though it's really old seen the mods yeah some wow. of the total conversions as well my, my definitive place to play Skyrim was the Switch <laughs> so good having it on the Switch I tell you because I had it on I think we had it on PS3 I think we got it together yeah yeah um, and then uh, I just always forgot about it I'd play like I remember 50, you, 60 hours and then I'd be like you did oh. the companions that was like the first thing you did was companions maybe um, which is like the fighters guild sort of equivalent of Skyrim I remember you doing that and then you never did the main story I, have you have you finished the main story I've finished the main story now yeah yeah it's underwhelming isn't it yeah well I mean yeah I am um, that's a big problem with Skyrim it, it was um, it was, uh, yeah it was alright but I mean I'd played Skyrim before. In my head, I'd completed Skyrim. Because I'd... Well, not completed it, but I'd played it enough. I'd played, like, mm. three characters, did, like, 50 hours, never got through the main story. But I finally did on Switch, which that's it's just awesome being on Switch, because I was literally, like, sitting in bed, like, you know, nothing to do. And I was like, oh, I'll play a mission on my Switch. Mm. It absolutely banged. That's why I really want Fallout 3 on Switch as well. Ah, oh, Fallout 3 is good. It's a good game. That'd be sick. I kind of... I reckon that's... Uh, reckon that's going to come at E3. little reckon... prediction there. There we go. Inside scoop. Top I, trap. I bop, dropping Bethesda. bombs. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. Bethesda have been su- supporting um, uh, the Switch more than like anyone else. There's Wolfenstein. Doom. Uh, Doom, yeah. I think Wolfenstein New Blood is going to come to Switch as well. Yeah, I had... Uh, oh, no, they were doing... Was it Wolfenstein 2 they are bringing out as well for Switch? Yeah, something like that. Um... This is Bethesda Game Studio special, by the way. Any Doom and Rage and Prey fans, you losers, uh, um, and are going to suck out. And Dishonored, and Dishonored too. Yeah. Although Dishonored is a is a, a cracking game. Is it? I never played the Dishonored. Good, good story. Um, it was Dishonored two. I didn't really like, but Dishonored one was quite good because the way you played it affected how the story ended. Mm. So if you're a stealth character, but you still killed people, it would affect the story differently to if you're a stealth character who didn't kill people. Or if you just went around killing everyone, or if you did like a mix, it affected the ending of the game, like whether yeah. or not you got a good or a bad ending. So it made you want to go back and replay it. Yeah, I, I bloody hate stealth. I'm shit at it. <laughs> I can't even stealth on Horizon Zero Dawn, and that's got like zero stealth mechanics. <laughs> it's just the hide in the long grass, and I can't even do that. Um, all right, so your top one is Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, um, number two. I presume that Morrowind. top three are Elder Scrolls. Um, Would you put any Fallouts above Elder Scrolls? Yeah, I'd put a Fallout above Oblivion, but it wouldn't be a Bethesda game studio's one. It'd be 
Fallout New Vegas by Obsidian. Obsidian, yeah, which I think was a lot better than Fallout Three. Which one? Sorry, New Vegas. New Vegas, yeah. New Vegas is better than Fallout Three. Okay. Well, see, here's the thing. I the New Vegas uh, that we had on PS3. I remember buying that because Fallout Three is one of my favorite games of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I got into New Vegas or bought New Vegas, and I was like, oh, I can't wait. Literally, like. I think what the guy gets shot in the head or something, then you wake up in someone's house and yeah. then you sort of do the loose tutorial of like going and shooting some rats or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, nah, I don't want to. Shouldn't have to. I just don't <laughs> want to do this. And for some reason, I just didn't ever get into it. And then you just ended up. I was like, Seb, you want to play yeah. in New Vegas? You're like, yeah, go ahead. So the uh, story of that game was was good, but then also it like had quite a, a different sort of richer world I think than mm. Fallout 3 um, it also had all the different factions and stuff like that which was quite cool so you yeah. could, it felt more like an RPG where you like chose what happened that you really like affected the story in that one which was quite good yeah I really liked the idea of Las Vegas and stuff and then considering like that was the time when all PS3 games were like brown and that one was had a little bit of a colour palette which was pretty good but no, I never got into it. And then everyone's more like, oh, there's like proper RPG mechanics and like your choices actually affect things, which is a big gripe on Fallout 4. Yes. But I don't know. To That's... me, like, I don't know. Fallout 3 was because that was probably my first sort of Western style RPG I actually played. Like, mm. uh, I remember going around our friend's house when we were kids and he had it. And he was playing the... Um, oh, it was Scott, wasn't it? Scott, yeah. 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 He was playing the Mothership Zeta, I think it was called. Yeah, yeah, he just bought it, hadn't he? I the the DLC. And uh, I remember the the big thing was like that ray gun being in Fallout 3 that like killed anyone instantly. So he was going around collecting all the alien weapons in that DLC, over-encumbered. Like, it was just like <laughs> trotting around really, really slowly. But for some reason, I was like, yeah, that game looks cool, as he was like explaining the mechanics to me. Um, I, I do remember it was. I, I enjoyed Fallout Three. Like, I don't get me wrong. There was some good quests, there's some good factions and things like that. But um, the, the main story was good. I really enjoyed that. It was a really solid main story. I feel. William Neeson. Yeah, he was good in it. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, I always find it hard to go back to play Fallout Three, whereas I can really quite easily drop into Fallout New Vegas. But I think that's maybe because there's more choice. Mm. The fact that I can just go off and do things. Mm. But um, speaking of Fallout, I would put Fallout 4 as my worst of the modern Bethesda game studio games. Okay. So, to preface this, we have, well, I haven't played anything before Fallout 3. I think you've played. Um, I, I played a little bit of Oblivion, I didn't like that either. When we were, I remember when you bought Oblivion, I hated yeah. it. You, I hate, you were the reason I bought Oblivion, though. I hated the way the people looked in Oblivion. It was oh, that, it's so that stupid. Chubby, yeah. cheeked face. They looked like me. I did find the art style from Morrowind. I find it nicer than the one from Oblivion. I think Oblivion's too cartoony. Yeah, every time I see Morrowind, it's just really dark. Like, yeah, but that suits the suits yeah. the world. But I remember buying Obliv- it was Oblivion was the first Xbox game I bought. Um, I'm just telling him not to tap on the table, so it's not coming through the mic. <laughs> I'm just accentuating my points. Um, no, I, I Oblivion was the first one I bought. You were like, oh yeah, my friend Tim plays this. He really likes it. I think you'll like it. It's the first Xbox mm-hmm. game I bought. I played it. I used to get really scared of the the dungeon. Um, the beginner's dungeon couldn't play yeah. it for like a couple of weeks managed to get my way through that dungeon went to do the main story got really scared of the portals I was like seven at this time <laughs> and I was like no I can't do the portals so I'd have like massive breaks come back to it a bit older and be like oh yeah this is really obvious now yeah. I, 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 I did enjoy I did enjoy it but um, I've played uh, so- Arena, Daggerfall Morrowind Oblivion Skyrim like my first like, I didn't play them in order obviously but yeah, yeah. I've gone back and played Arena and Daggerfall because a lot of people Daggerfall is their favourite yeah because that's the massive one isn't it that's like as big as the UK or something like that it's well, huge Arena's got procedurally generated dungeons and things like that amazing. so like they're always randomised and you can get lost in there for ages mm. but Daggerfall had some cool like so, RPG systems have you ever played uh, the first Elder Scrolls yeah Arena is that Arena yeah yeah Okay. it's just like a dungeon crawler they're just sort so of- you played them all you yeah, yeah. complete them all? No, I'm not complete them all. Okay. But I feel like I I also did I buy you the original Fallouts on PC for like a birthday or something? Um, Fallout One. 
and Fallout. I don't know. I feel like there was a Fallout Fallout One, Two, and Tactics package and game or something that I vaguely remember buying you. But maybe I'm making things up. I'm not sure. I know I've got them. Um, but they're on my Steam library, so yeah, okay. I don't know if it's. I remember picking up Fallout One and Two. I've played a bit of Fallout One, but that's like the isometric one. Yeah. yeah. So it's completely different to Fallout Three. So yeah. it's. I don't particularly like that. Well, they're not actually Bethesda games either. Are they? No, no, they're. Well, they're by the original people from Obsidian. Yeah, I can't remember what the original studio was called, but it was them who did it. Yeah. Yeah. There was like Black Isle or something oh, like that. Yeah, Black Isle, I think it was. Yeah. Um, they had good lore, but like, I don't get the people who complain yeah. about Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 not being like a traditional Fallout game. Yeah. When in reality, like. They're just different. They're, they're completely different styles. Yeah. I mean, I can get sort of like, oh, it's a. They're using the name of the franchise and sort of like the. The aesthetic and setting, but you know, it's it's completely different. And besides, the people who Obsidian made that Wasteland series as well, which is I think they yeah. made Wasteland. That's basically the original Fallout's anyway. So they're also making yeah, uh, Outer that. Worlds as well. Yeah, we'll which... talk about that in a bit. Oh yes, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, all right then. So where are we? Top five list. Let's oh, so quickly we've... round it out. We got Skyrim at the top, Morrowind in number two, just because it had a great story. Like I don't, I think that if you if there was to be an episode on video game stories, I'd include Morrowind in my top three for that one. Okay, that's that's interesting for an yeah. open world game like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, the problem with I don't want to diverge away from the point of the top five, but um, the problem with all Bethesda games is you mentioned it in one of your video essays of playing mediocre games. Mm. The problem with all the Bethesda games is once you've completed the emotionally charged story, you always feel underwhelming when you've completed it. And you're just kind of mm. like, I don't really know what to do now. I want to. I think that was quite a lot of people's problem with um, Skyrim. I remember after I completed that. And then, like, sort of, the, you'd get little reactions in the world of, like, some people saying the odd thing to you. But then, like, I don't know, you've just, like, saved someone or something. And they'll be yeah. like, Hi, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, piss off, like. I don't know. It's kind of like that sort of weird, unreactionary world that, I don't know, I guess is going to change with Elder Scrolls 6, maybe? Who knows? We can we can talk about Elder Scrolls 6 in a bit. We um, can, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about the future. It's, it's going to be scary, I feel. Um, but yeah, Morrowind, um, then I'm going to whack in Oblivion, and then it would have to be Fallout 3 in 4th. What about West? New Vegas? Oh, are we are we including game? Uh, oh, are we including game studios or just? Bethesda? Oh no, that's the Bethesda game studios. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and then probably in fifth, I'm gonna controversially put Elder Scrolls Online. Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. Um, it's technically not by Bethesda Game Studios, but it's in the Elder Scrolls world. Well, we could say that about New Vegas as well. That's true, but they've got um some of the people who worked on some of the Elder Scrolls yeah. games work on. I didn't know you played that. I do have it. Um, I started playing it, but I'm kind of a sucker for falling into games like that. So if I ended up playing that game, that'd be all I played, and I don't have any time for anything else. So I sort I have of was cycles like, with it, yeah. I was like, mm, I'm not gonna play it. Literally, me and my friend were planning like last summer just to fucking like sit in our pants all summer and be sad and play Elder Scrolls Online, which luckily we didn't actually do. Um, because, yeah, I've just got lost. I played it a little bit. And I was like... Because I wanted to see the whole of Tamriel. And I've never seen anything apart from Skyrim. So It is quite good. But I tried to... I, I think I play it more as a... Sort of a single player game. Mm. Like I go around and I do things on my own. I quite like... Because there was, there was a whole debate about when it like first launched. It was really, really like shit. Mm, well, like, you had to pay for a subscription as well yeah, as paying for the game, didn't I, you? I think I paid for like... A year up front or something like that. I paid Did for like you? six months. We'd have been living in the same house, surely, when. Yeah, yeah, I pre ordered it. Okay. Um, Don't remember. I pre ordered it and ended up paying for the game cards up front. Um, so I've, I had early access, so I played it the day before it was released, which was quite cool. Um, but there was a problem with it being really terribly. Terrib- like, just a terrible shit game. Mm. And then they like rebranded it with Tamriel Online or Unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah. And it became good, but like with the law. When it was shit, they were like, no, it's not part of the, the main Elder Scrolls lore. And mm. then it became good again. They're like, oh, no, wait, actually it is. Isn't it like a few thousand years before Skyrim? Yeah, it's set in the second age, uh, the second era. And then like all of the 
all of the games apart from Skyrim are set in the third era, and then Skyrim set in the fourth era. Okay, sweet. Well, that's the that's the, probably the best thing about Bethesda. Like, the gameplay is pretty average and clunky, but their lore building is brilliant. It's pretty good. It's, I do enjoy the worlds, but the problem with the um, the having it set in the past is nobody ever references it. Like in any of the future games yeah so you've got like this awkward thing of like nobody ever references it but then also yeah. the plot is basically Oblivion but ripped off oh is it yeah so it's basically one of the Daedric princes there's like 12 of them has opened up portals in the world and he's trying to take over Tamriel because there's no emperor on the throne because basically there has to be an emperor who lights these magic fires and they stop this sounds cool <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> the <laughs> dragon man. fires and stuff but um Basically, that all that happens in the second era, and then the plot of Oblivion is a Daedric prince tries to invade Tamriel by opening up portals because nobody's lit the dragon fires. So it's classic. It's, it's the same plot, basically. Can't wait for Elder Scrolls Six, then, basically. Yeah, no. let's light some fires. Um, so, what do you think of Fallout Four? Did you play Fallout Four much? I, I played. Um, I pretty I pretty much complete. Yeah, I I completed Fallout Four. Um, I went round. I, I played it twice. I played it. Down the Brotherhood of Steel route because obviously I was a big fan of the Brotherhood of Steel that they made in Fallout uh, Three. Um, in Fallout New Vegas, they're kind of dicks, but mm. um, I, so I went down that route and then I went down the um, railroad path for the second one. It was okay, but um, I don't really, I don't mind that people enjoyed it. I yeah. know that it's like it's got the base building which some people enjoy. I, I quite enjoyed. Yeah, you yeah. enjoy the base building. Like it's not really my cup of tea I don't mind it being in there like if, if it caters to someone's needs yeah chuck it in there but like as a fan of the sort of Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas um, I can't remember did you have to do base building no uh, they sort of shoehorned a couple like, of aspects in there you like yeah I think it's like introduced to you and you do it in a mission or something but then do you yeah. have to ever go back uh, you have to build like um, you have to gather components to build this I don't know what they call it. Just this teleporting, teleportation thing to get into the institute. Mm. Um, and that's about it. So there's not a lot in there. It's like not super shoehorned in. It's shoehorned in there a little bit, but you didn't have to. But mm. I just, it was it was good combat, like good action game. But, yeah, the shooting um, was much better in Fallout Four. Yeah, but I think just everyone was kind of annoyed that it's graphically as well, it didn't look great, and no, um, the the speech system as well like the speech system didn't bother me so much because uh like the sort of the one paraphrased words that yeah. didn't bother me because that was mass effect to me like that was, yeah yeah it was like suited like i'd already done that before um i quite liked the voice actor like because I, I was saying this in the previous episode as well i don't get immersed into a game but like, I don't think that I'm this person I don't like to role play like I'm this person I like to I don't know like a TV show be shown the character kind of thing so I don't really customise characters much like when I play Mass Effect I just play as normal Shepard maybe I'm really boring as fuck no like I that, did but, that um, but yeah so I, I don't mind it too much I know quite a lot of people didn't like that because it took away the role playing yeah, I mean, to it. that is one of the reasons I enjoy this series, because I like to get immersed. Like, yeah. The reason I have it on PC, I play it so often on PC, is because you can, like, get mods to make it more immersive. Yeah. Like, you have, I don't know, 8K horse textures, and you're like, yes. Well, that's why you, you like at. to replay as, like, a different character and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you? and then do things how the character would do them, which is sad. In a, like, it is, well, it sounds I mean, it's sad. It's a role-playing game, isn't it? It is an RPG, and it does, this way you can then do things that you wouldn't normally have done when you play the game mm. so it makes it more interesting than just everyone building a stealth archer build that can yeah, just yeah. sneak attack and kill yeah. everyone yeah I, I don't tend to play more than once the only time i did it with skyrim is because i forgot like where i was yeah i just <laughs> forgot what i was doing i was literally like in a cave and i'm like where the fuck am i i'll just start again yeah kind of thing. i think the one of the problems with fallout 4 is there's a big divide in the elder scrolls community and the fallout communities of the dumbing down of the series yeah um, I say that in air quotes well, cause, but yeah I, I get the point because it's like where where they both started that's why people I think go yeah. for like Daggerfall and uh, like or you have to like, look in your journal to find yeah, the directions yeah. and then you'd have to like walk that way on the map and like try to actually figure it out rather than having like a quest marker yeah I mean unfortunately like it's business and you know well, you more said... people are going to buy 
You say that, but I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey did it well because you have an option at the start mm. in Assassin's Creed Odyssey where you can turn on um, the help or you can just have limited help. Like, so it's like yeah. a, sort of a hardcore mode in a way, but like it just lets you. It, it doesn't like handhold you. Mm. So I think if, for Elder Scrolls Six, that's something that they should do. Yeah, it would just give them an option, I guess. Oh, I had another voice break then. <laughs> I had one the other day as I was recording my video on um on playing mediocre games and I mentioned Fallout 4 I've actually been mentioning Fallout a lot last episode last week's episode probably the best soundtrack Fallout games Fallout 3 and 4 is largely the same soundtrack but that yeah that vibe loved it I mean about like the the radio orchestral or like the radio yeah, the radio, yeah. The radio was good I love that it's just the vibe of that game is just awesome when you're killing ghouls and you're like I don't want to set the world um, big iron on his hip for Fallout uh, New Vegas that was a tune isn't that in Fallout 4 as well I don't know I feel like the, because I remember I getting Fallout really 4 and being music. like um, this is basically the same Saturn track as Fallout 3 but I'm kind of, kind of okay with that oh right I don't know if they you know, but in they did it quite well in Fallout New Vegas keeping it cowboy yeah. quite like that okay. it, was, it was fun yeah so I never completed Fallout 4 shock I've only actually completed Skyrim really I haven't even completed that <laughs> There's no point in doing this special. Well, goodbye, everyone. Um, well, no, I've played quite a lot. So the the best story one though is Morrowind. Yeah. Like the best one for any story is Morrowind. Well, remaster it and put it on Switch, and then I might play it. Um, okay. So, what's next on Bethesda? Fallout seventy six. Ever played that? Interested? No. I no. pre-ordered it. Cancelled my. Pre-order. Did you pre-order it? Oh, you're one of those suckers. I think I'm actually stamped down on people like you. I mentioned Fallout 76 as an example because it came up with pre-orders before they even announced what it was and then everyone just pre-ordered it I was like why what's the point <laughs> what, what the, you don't even know what the game is no I, like, I pre-ordered it um, after they announced the collector's edition because they had the cool like T51B power armor helmet um, oh, didn't you have a Pip-Boy as well from Fallout 4 no I didn't get that one in the end did you not no okay. it's every time I get hype for it and then just it gets close to release date they'll release like details about it or the press will have got their hands yeah. on it and they'll be like oh by the way it is shit like the the pit boy was a really cheap plastic yeah. crap well there was that whole thing about the Fallout 76 duffel bag as well wasn't it that yep. it was basically they just like a plastic bag moved they just, it from canvas they just to gone nylon. to Sainsbury's and like picked up like a few thousand plastic bags for 10p a pop it is it is worrying Fallout 76 um, like because it came about that there was uh, one of the studios under Umbrella wanted to develop a game called Battlecry, and it was basically like a Fortnite or an Anthem type mm. free for all, free to play. And it turned out it bombed. It was like shit. It was so shit. So they, rather than axing all the people, they moved their studio into Bethesda Game Studios. Mm. Um, it's like Bethesda Game Studios Austin. And then since they had all the online um, components and research and stuff, they were like, yeah, let's try to develop a Fallout game in yeah. online. Well, they were saying they wanted to do a online fallout but I don't know I kind of don't believe it I think this game is a pressure from shareholders at Zenimax or Bethesda or whatever um, just to like go into the online space as if Skyrim's not doing well enough like keeping on selling Mm. Um, but yeah I kind of think it's more pressure and then like people actually at Bethesda Game Studios are kind of like well our engine's kind of shit it's not really gonna work so like we'll give you a game nothing as much to as do possible. in the game and there's also it didn't seem like there was enough time either so I kind of think like maybe there's a little bit of developers being like oh that wasn't good enough but you know just sort of like to prove a point in a way I know they yeah. still try to make the best game they can but I don't know they should ditch that and make it free to play something like that I just don't like games like this I'm like why does it have to be online why do you have to pay for a lot of the stuff? Like, yeah. pay for, like they said that any content that you get in the game was going to be uh, that included actual additions to the gameplay itself would be free, and then the cosmetic stuff would be what you pay for. Yeah, I don't mind that as a transaction but DLC I thing. Done that. Like, yeah, if in theory that works well, like something that doesn't affect gameplay, but you can look like a ridiculous buffoon in the <laughs> Iron Man suit if you want. That's fine. But I've seen it's like 20 quid for like a set of armour or something. Yeah. Elder Ridiculous. Scrolls Online. What's the, the point? The, the big houses that you can get in the game. Um, I was looking at how much they, they will... Because you pay for crowns. And then 
that's the in-game currency then that you spend on the stuff in the store and the biggest houses you get in the game cost you 70 to 80 pound Jesus to Christ. buy a house it's just in a virtual game I don't know yeah Fallout 6 76 to me just why does it have to be online what a waste of time so much controversy Bethesda as well. aren't going through that yeah they would literally just, every day there's a new story just like that the, shit that the shit, rum that bottles shit. as well they they were re- released limited edition rum bottles rather yeah. than coming in glass they came, like, claim, came in plastic oh, dear. Um, which is bad then. yeah well yeah that's why I'm kind of worried about Bethesda at the moment because what their last two games Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 haven't gone down well no that's why particularly. I'm worried uh, Fallout 76 especially I mean Fallout 4 is a good game but as I said in my video because it's got the name Fallout that it's like that probably knocks a couple of points off it mm. because it's not up to the standards of Fallout but if that was like someone came along and was like look at this game everyone would be like wow that's sick that's a good game nice one um, I like um, when they were releasing Morrowind Bethesda was nearly bankrupt they released mm. Morrowind it saved the company it did really well Living came out that does really well. Skyrim was their biggest game that they've ever done. It sold so many copies, which is why they released it on so many different things. But I don't mind the company like trying to attract a new audience. But the problem is they're not keeping enough in the game to keep their current audience. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. It's kind not of like the, to the George Lucas one. Star Wars, where they start like I just feel like they're starting to l- not understand their audience anymore. Yeah. Like, they're doing what they think is right. Like, George Lucas, with those fucking prequels. <laughs> they're doing what they think is right, and then not actually realising that what they're doing is wrong. But we'll see. With upcoming releases of Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six, which they obviously announced that little bit at the end of E3 where they were like oh look at these two games because they knew Elder, uh, Fallout 76 was shit because they the people are aware of it they know it they yeah. they get these like they do um reviews uh, what they call they're like in-house reviews like they get reviewers to come play the game and like sort of beta test a review kind of thing see how it's going to do and they must have just known it's not going to do well so like oh by the way this is uh, these games are coming out to look forward to. Don't lose faith in us just yet. That was the most pointless reveal though, because yeah, no. everyone knew that they were gonna they were gonna do an Elder Scrolls Six at some point anyway. Exactly. So but all they've done is just it was good marketing in a way because now you have got like people. I think this Elder Scrolls Tactics or something is some YouTube channel. Um, you got him making like five videos a day, like trying to work out where yeah. that bit of land is from the teaser trailer yeah. things like that and you're just getting hundreds of thousands of views just on like 30 uh, seconds even I'm one fact. of them people yeah who, who watches the video well I watch them as well because I'm just like where's it going to be is that a YouTuber called ESO he does those that's kind it, of videos that's ESO yeah I, I quite like him I quite like him um, yeah and then Starfield that'll be interesting but I, I don't mind what they do with Starfield because Bethesda always has these ideas that they want to try to implement at some point in the future mm. So like Fallout Shelter, um, the mobile game, came from like an idea that they wanted to do ages ago. And then obviously, um, you know, they've got the Elder Scrolls Blades coming Blades, out. Yeah. yeah, that came from them wanting to do the PSP Oblivion version. Yeah, they've yeah. sort of taken that, developed that into Blades. So I don't mind if they do new crazy stuff for Starfield because it's a brand new IP. They can do what they want. Yeah. They can go to town with it. It's been rumoured for such a long time, like having this sci-fi-ish branch of the Bethesda Game Studios formula but it's sort of like how does that work because uh, I mean I know they're iterating on the engine but it, the games have never been big and there's loading screens like for days so I don't well, know is it going to be on one planet is it like <laughs> shut up um, is it going to be on one planet is it going to be I don't know across multiple planets but then just to kick him in the teeth Obsidian I'm only going bloody announced Outer Worlds yeah Outer Worlds I love the look of that game because it's it's so close to Fallout it's still got that cartoony aesthetic of like the mad comedy as well 50s 60s and the dark comedy yeah but I've seen loads of people hating on that at the moment it's because Because they're going to the um Epic Game Store isn't it for PC? Is it? Oh, I don't know, but they've um, they're exclusively on that. Um, same with like games like Metro's. Yeah, I'll, on yeah, I'll get over it. 
Um, <laughs> simple as that, to be honest. It's just annoying. It's just oh, yeah, annoying. I can imagine it's annoying, but like, PC players have just had it easy for a while. No, but it's like if you're on your PS4 and then like you can't buy off the PS4 store, you've got to like go to a thumb third party app that you well, download no. on your PS4 and like boot it up and. It's not really though, is it? It's like as is if an Xbox exclusive came to PS4, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay then. I don't know. Uh, that's not the point of this video, uh, this <laughs> podcast today, anyway. Um, yeah, so there's been there seems to be a lot of hate because, funnily enough, people on the internet haven't actually understood what the game is. Imagine that they've misjudged what the game Jump is. Jump into conclusions without exactly. Um, they just see the trailer research. and they're like, oh my god, it's like Fallout No Man's Sky. And I'm like, oh my god, no, it's not. They literally the developers have just been saying that it's like a few planets and a few sections of that planet, little bits like it's 30, 40 hours long. That's pretty good for me. Yeah. Um, but it's replayable. Like that's like the point they're trying to get at. And they're also they're a small studio. They've only just been bought by Microsoft, but they had been developing this game before for a while. Yeah. Uh, before they got bought. So it's like people expectations are just ridiculous because they're now it's the No Man's Sky thing they're just like they're going to get angry at this game when it's not what they thought it was it's not Fallout in space and you can go everywhere I don't know no but I'm glad that the studio is doing something like this because Fallout New Vegas was so good but whenever you talk about Bethesda Game Studios or like Bethesda Game Studios talks about the their franchise and stuff they always just sweep that one under the rug because oh, yeah. they didn't develop it like yeah, yeah. so always be like ah, oh, so it's been 10 years or whatever since Fallout 3 you're like wait but what about New Vegas and they yeah. they did do a um, no clip um, they're like a documentary crew did the documentary yeah. on them no clip's good yeah Danny um, O'Dwyer they did they talked about Fallout New Vegas and they said it was like it was sort of they Bethesda Game Studios didn't really want to do it but this it was Bethesda the publisher mm. who was like yeah we're gonna get them to do it and then they wanted to do something again, like with Fallout 4, but yeah. it didn't happen. Well, I guess it's sort of like that thing of, um, I don't know, like, because it's now Bethesda Game Studios things, it's not the Black Isle or Obsidian's thing anymore. Uh, it's their thing, and then you've got all these old fans who are like, oh, we prefer Obsidian Black Isle, so they're like, right, we want to do it our way, but then like, you're getting told, oh, hand, hand this one back to the old people just for the fans, then you're sort of like, oh. My yeah. work's not good enough for them. Yeah. Kicking their teeth, that I, in some, for a lot of fans, they did it better. Yeah. As well. Well, exactly. That's why I'm looking forward to this Obsidian game because it's probably going to be the best, uh, profess, bleh, best Bethesda Game Studios game for a while, and it's not even Bethesda. Yeah. Because it looks good. I like the. Um, they sort of got their own VAT system as yeah. well. Uh, the guns look cool. I really like the aesthetic as well. But it's just going to be interesting to see now what how that compares to Starfield because I think they're going to be quite similar. It's going to be small sections on like a planet. On big pla yeah. Um, I don't think Starfield is going to be like Mass Effect, Star Wars, sci-fi. I reckon it's going to be more like Outer Worlds, like that Fallout zaniness kind of thing. Yeah, probably. So yeah, it's going to be weird to see. But then like Obsidian have sort of like shot in there. They're going to be out this year. Starfield probably not going to be out till next year at the earliest. Not even going to be at E3 either. No, probably not. Um, I I'll probably pick up Starfield. Um, I, I don't know anything about it, but I think I'll pick it up. Um, That's brand loyalty, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm a big fan of them, but then start I could use Starfield pretty much as my gauge for where they're going to be heading. Yeah. Elder Scrolls 6, well, I mean, I I'm think. still going to pick up Elder Scrolls 6. I, I am. I just think they need to, need to learn a lesson. I need to get taught a lesson by uh, like CD Projekt Red. Or I, C CD Projekt Red. I enjoyed <laughs> Witcher Polish. until the very end of the story and then it ruined it for me because it's like uh, Siri can jump through worlds, can't she? I haven't played it. Ah, well, si um, spo oh, too late for this, but spoiler. Um, Siri can sort of like travel through different worlds. She goes through like portals and stuff. So you've built up this whole medieval fantasy world and um, basically Joe's got his fingers in his ears for this bit there's this whole medieval fantasy world and you, you try to find Siri you find her and then she's like oh yeah I went to a world where there was all sci-fi stuff and it kind of just broke that sort of the, that wall for me because I'm one of the people who likes to immerse but including sci-fi in a fantasy world it, it kind of that one small moment just ruined sort of me my experience with The Witcher but 
doing that as if I'm ever going to play it. Probably not. No, you'll never get around I've to got it, it but it's, oh, just, it's too scary. I don't, I don't have the time to be jumping into that. But yeah, I think they can learn from something like The Witcher, which is like outdone Skyrim. Like, well, or Fallout 4, which was like the same year or year after. I can't remember. But it's like ridiculously big game with like actual like loads of content. Because like some of the side missions in the Fallout games get a bit, uh, they yeah. like run into this building and shoot. It's gonna yeah. do something else. I, don't get, mm. I think for for Elder Scrolls Six, um, things that I don't want them to do, I don't want a voice protagonist in Elder Scrolls Six. I didn't mind it for Fallout Four, but I don't think it would work in Elder Scrolls Six. Mm. Just because in Fallout Four and in Fallout Three, they pretty much build up where your character comes from and like. Like, so you start in a vault or whatever, you know, you've got your whole childhood there. Yeah, they yeah. can kind of control that character and how that character's sort of built. It's once you're in the world that you can do what you want. Just can't wait to wake up on a wagon. Yeah, but in Skyrim and stuff, you or in Oblivion and Morrowind, you have no context. You always just are in prison. Yeah. And you just, then your, your character's got no predetermined past. Like, do what you want, shape your character how you want. So the voice in it is going to limit how players can play with characters. I want to play as my character from Skyrim again. I want to be the Dragonborn. A Dragonborn again? Just the same guy. <laughs> like, and here he is ten, 10 years later and he's just got his feet up in his little homestead. What if you uh, What if you made your Dragonborn like an old guy? He's dead. Can you, Well, you can roleplay that he's dead, but you can't just <laughs> kill him, can you? You can't just be like, oh, he's died now. He's died of old age. I've given up on the game. I'm like, well done. Oh, I killed the dragon in uh, Skyrim. The old dude, the good dragon. I killed Parthenax. him. Yeah, I killed him. I don't know why I did, but I did. <sighs> See, I quite, I quite like Par- Parthenax. Yeah, did I did. Did you know he's voiced by the guy who voices Mario? I did not. No, the same guy who does all the woohoo's for Mario is this guy who voices Parthenax. Fair. Like the deep. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah, it's really weird. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Well, that. I guess that pretty much rounds up. Actually, no, I've got one more. Uh, where does Fallout go next? Um, so I mean, that's gonna be at least ten years, I think, until next Fallout. But yeah, I'd quite like to. See, uh, are we talking about locations or just story? Well, or? location, but or gameplay wise, just what changes, what happens? Um, well, with Fallout, we've noticed that in the old Fallouts, they were set on the west coast, mm. and um, like the Obsidian ones on the west coast. First, they stuck to the east coast quite a lot, so it'd be quite nice for them to do something on the west coast I think that'd be quite fun mm. but they probably won't because they like to draw their inspiration from places near them so like for Washington they Bethesda's not that far f- the, the place is not mm. that far from Washington so they would go down and like research that and then Boston's not that far but I think I'd like to see New York I think that'd be really cool New York would be pretty good because that'd be sort of Motown-ish kind of vibes like That'd really be... big skyscraper like I think it'd be quite intimidating like when you go down mm. a street it'd be like these big skyscrapers looking down on you like those sort of, all those lights Central and Park stuff would be quite scary like that, yeah I was also thinking like uh, maybe LA would be pretty cool yeah like That'd sort of cool. something going on in the Hollywood sign be pretty sweet uh, maybe just like not in not in the US I think the closest they'll come though is probably Canada Maybe. There's not an interest in Canada. Um, well, they keep... Some snow. I went back and played Fallout 3, um, and there's the Pit DLC, which is set in Pittsburgh, and they they reference places, and in the other... It's a Point Lookout, it's the other DLC. They referenced Boston quite a lot, but then they also re- referenced Canada. See, I, I always think Fallout 4 is in Boston, but you've corrected me on that, because I've realised that like Boston, uh, Detroit, and... Where's Fallout 4 set? Um, F- Fallout 4 is set in Massachusetts, Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, so it is Boston? Yeah. Okay. See, th- there's these three Detroit, Boston, and Chicago. They're the same city to me. Yeah, you said Chicago in one of the Chicago, episodes. Chicago, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. no, Joe, it's set in Boston. Chicago, yeah, because the Watch Dogs Boston, is though. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. But they're just all the same to me. It's because you've got Diamond City, which is supposed to be based on the um, Boston Red Sox. But, um, oh what the stadium yeah oh man that's sick I love that bit yeah that's cool. in there. Um, yeah I, I mean I've always wanted to see it in London so I like games being in London I feel like America's I think it'd be cool done. but 
it's they're sort of like the play on American culture at the time wasn't yeah it? well that's the thing about GTA GTA well. yeah but um I'd like uh, imagine just something like really random like Stoke on Trent <laughs> I mean I think, wow that wouldn't really work it already looks like it's been hit by a nuclear bomb anyway doesn't it fucking hell um sorry to anyone from Stoke but it doesn't uh, actually it's got really nice uh, sp- remember we went on holiday to Stoke Oh yes, yes, yes I do. On the canal, on the canal, on the canal boat, Stoke. and uh, went to uh, the water park in Stoke. It's lovely. <laughs> Got all of the diseases. There is there is some places in uh, England for anyone that listens outside of England. Uh, I'm from Wales, but there are places. You're not in from Wales. I, I live in Swansea. You, you you live in Wales. You're not from. This Wales. is not the debate of the 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 topic. N- well, it's not a geography podcast. No shit. <laughs> Not yet. Um, there's places in England that sound shit, like they just like Grimsby, Skagness, Little Arsington. You know, Little Arsington. Wow, these kind I've of never places. Heard of Little Arsington? Oh, it's a real place. Didcot Lady Grove. Like that place. <laughs> I went to Sandwich recently. What's the What's the place at the end of the tube line? Um, Cock Cock Fosters. Cock Fosters. I live in, near a place called Cock Fosters. Yes. <laughs> Such a stupid place. Yeah, I know. All right. Well. We're, we're off track. <laughs> I think I think we've run out of things to say about Bethesda. Forty minutes, right? Well, we're going for a lunch and a pint, I think, before you go off to Poland, the land of Sea Project. Yep, I'm going to. If do you some, see any Cyberpunk research. 2077, say hello. All that that's yeah. a good game. Get an exclusive on here. Yeah, that's going to. be um, I'm also going to add to the what we've been playing because I, I know you've done it at the start of the podcast. Oh, okay. But I've been playing Bioshock again recently. Bioshock One Remastered. Okay. Um, I just want to say that's an absolutely amazing game. What, and, on PS4 or? Uh, no on PC. Why? Why did it be remastered? Um, I mean. Because they've done. They did the Bioshock collection, didn't they? Yeah, but why would it need to be remastered if it's on PC? I thought PC was great, and you didn't need remasters. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does. But anyway, Bioshock. That's what I'm playing. One of the best stories. One of the best aesthetics for a video game. Brilliant. Gameplay is a bit shit in terms of gameplay, but it's a quality game. Okay. Well, instead of actually going back to Matt, we might as well round out the show here. Um, so at the end of each show, we like to do segments known as Controversial Corner. Shut up. Sorry, there's a car <laughs> that went past. It annoys me. Um, controversial uh, Corner, which is our controversial opinions. We like to mic drop that. And uh, Memory Card. I'm gonna s- I didn't really prepare Seb for this, but I'm going to see if he's got anything in either of these that I can quickly... Drop on him. I can cut this bit out as well if if you need a bit of time. Uh what we what we saying? What's your, what's the what's the segment? Memory card. Either one, Wait, or both. Is it just a game from the past that you'd like to see brought back? Or no, it's just uh, if you're not listening to the podcast. I, I have. I listen every week, but I'm still really confused at what you're asking of me. Uh, memory card is just like a game from your past that you sort of explain and got memories attached to. Um, do you want me to link it back to the Professor Special? Or is Doesn't it have un- to be. It's un- Professor related. related. Um, or have you got a controversial past. opinion? Uh, f- let's go with a game from my past that uh, I've been playing recently. Is Age of Empires 2. Right, one sec. Alright, so you've got a memory card then, yeah? Yes. Okay, let's load up your memory card. Um, Age of Empires 2. Okay. I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires 2. And I-, I wanted to include it on the podcast because you guys are console oriented oriented gamers and yes. uh, this is a PC classic um, yeah, for those who don't know I'm pretty sure everyone knows what Age of Empires is you start out in sort of the peasant dorky RTS yeah and it's a good game it's, it's you know you start out in a sort of like tribal state and then you like build up your little civilization and then you upgrade through the states and it's um you could play, play like 30 40 minute games and then you'll start over again so it's just like mm. there is a story but the story's not good it's just fun to boot up with your with your mates so i played it um with wills recently it was just fun um the ai is really uh, hard in that game see i i've got memories of you playing all the rts's i, can't, I don't know if it's age of empires but you just spent all your time on them age of empires empire earth um uh, battle for middle earth which was a quality one Rome Total War, remember you guys playing a lot? I've played that in the past week. Have you? The original Rome Total War. What about Mountain Blade War Band? Mountain Blade War but Mountain Blade War Band. Mountain um, Blade, that's it. That's getting a, a sequel coming Is it? out. That looks insane. Is it? Yep. Is it? Alright, that's time to end then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Good sieges. Good sieges in that game. <laughs> okay. Alright, well thank you, Seb, for 
coming and joining me on this That's Bethesda right. special. I, thanks for letting me crash on the sofa. That's all right. Any time. <laughs> you're welcome to my very uncomfortable I, um, sofa. I won't piss on it this time. Well, that's a story that's, for another day. I don't think it is. I don't think that <laughs> needs to be told at any point, but all right. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed the episode, share it with your friends and your nan. That's a thing we like to do, apparently. I don't know share why. Share your nan. Yeah. Th- there is a problem with me being on the podcast. We've effectively cut the viewership by half by me being on it. Well, I'd hope you'd listen back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way to just like kick us while we're down. <laughs> Killed me. Uh, yeah, you can get it on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Top Chat Podcast. And bye for now. See you later.